Assam Chief Minister Tarun Gogoi has demanded the removal of Governor P.B. Acharya, saying he doesn't know how to maintain his dignity as a constitutional head. Mr. Acharya was first reported as saying that Hindustan is only for Hindus, but when he decided to clarify that comment to the media, he went a step further and said that Indian Muslims are free to go to Pakistan or Bangladesh. Indian Muslims are free to go anywhere. They can stay here, those who are staying here. Many of them have gone to Pakistan. If he wants to go to Pakistan or Bangladesh, he is free. If he is persecuted there, the same as persecuted, she is come out here. We have given the ashram. Bohut kam na te, aayenge to ashtray de dhenge na. India is so big hearted. Who gave, see, good old days when 100% Hindus are in India, 100%. We see this is type of, should not be continue as a governor. And particularly why the state like Assam? which is most important state, strategically otherwise. A permanent governor has not yet been appointed. Why? Hindus means that Hindu dharam ke hisab se nahi bola hai. Ye sab ek sarav dharav sambhavat jo apna concept hai, us hisab se unho ne kaha hai. Well, this isn't the first time that a governor has, and this particular governor has found himself in the middle of controversy, should he be asked to leave this position. Sambit Patra, what is the BJP's official reaction to what Mr. Acharya has said? Do you believe that he just went too far and really openly, overtly politicized his position today? So, Nidhi, first and foremost, it's a constitutional post. So, with utmost respect, uh, I would state all the facts over here. And I cannot be the spokesperson or, or hold brief for the governor. And as far as the decision on the governor is concerned, the president of India will take a decision. The party does not take a decision. But having said that, let's come to the topic proper. I would say an academic uh, uh, intention was lost in bad articulation. See, articulation is not everyone's cup of tea, though I believe that every politician, or for that matter of purpose, every constitutional post uh, should be very articulate. But in this particular case, as your report itself mentions, that for the first time, this particular governor, Mr. Acharya, has entered into controversy, which means that he is not a controversial person. He does not make, in general, such kind of uh, statements. Today, I believe he was speaking on the occasion of National Register uh, for Population in Assam, which is underway. And during that period, an academic point by him really got him into a tangle. And in an effort to escape from that tangle, he further entangled himself by misarticulation. You're calling it misarticulation. So you acknowledge that it was a misarticulation. Is that all it was? Is that, should a constitutional See, Anidhi, I, Nidhi, Nidhi, let, Let's make way. it very clear. Yeah. Nidhi, let me make few things very clear. Yeah. Uh, this daily debate of uh, Hindus, Muslims and some people go to Pakistan, some come from Pakistan. We do not subscribe to any such kind of feelings or debates. We firmly it's believe that India is an inclusive, pluralistic country and the agenda of Bharatiya Janata Party and for any and every constitutional post in India should be and is development. So we do not buy anything. Uh, articulated to that effect but I firmly believe I've gone through the whole article that the newspapers have come up with and I believe that the governor should be given a benefit of doubt over here though I am no one to give a benefit of doubt but I firmly believe he is not a person who wanted to make such kind of statement academically he was registering on the natural home phenomena in citizenship and refusal uh, which Israel and India generally have spoken about in that this line, he misarticulated as far as leaving to Pakistan is concerned. To I, 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 this is why you're a good spokesperson because you have found. No, I'm not defending. RT, I know, I'm not I know, to but you're trying either. to articulate why something. Why should I defend any as, government? As, as best you can, but uh, that's why RT is also <laughs> laughing. But come on, I mean, the, you know. He, he said he, that Hindustan is for Hindus. He's not the only governor, though, who's you know, been under fire. Tathagat Roy has been making a series of controversial yeah. statements and you know, a, a series of tweets. I mean, he's even once said uh, that uh, his Twitter handle says he's governor but still a proud Swayam Sevak. Whatever gave you the notion, I'm secular, I am, I am a Hindu. These are the kind of things he tweets. He's the governor Can you imagine? Of the state. Can you imagine? I mean, listen, there are two points here. One is that the governor is a constitutional you know, position, right? And the boundaries are very clearly set by the Constitution of India, which defines India as a secular democratic republic. Now, you know, you don't bring religion into this at all, you know, when you discuss citizens, because we are a secular nation. Religion does not define the Indian state. And I think every governor, since he is a constitutional authority, he must understand the boundaries of the Constitution. The second point here is, uh, uh, you know, Nidhi, that 
you know I think it again you know just sort of uh, tells us that the, how misused the post of governor is. You know, I mean, the Congress did it, the BJP is following suit. They appoint people who are really past their sell by date. And these are used as lollipops or as parking slots for people who have been loyal, who they, you know, want to dispense favors to. I mean, the Congress really perfected this art. The BJP is just following suit. I mean, the BJP should have set a new culture in motion when they came in on this so mandate. Rakesh, but they're doing, but they're doing that the same no, thing. At least with, the, with this government coming to power, there could have been a different precedent that would have been at least set for the appointment of governors. No, I think there is an expression deficit. Having said that, you just missing the uh, context, he made the remark. He made the remark in the context that Hindus are coming from Bangladesh and will they stay? He said that Hindus have no place in the world except India. And I'm giving one example. One lakh ten thousand Pakistani refugees are in India since 1971. Why Congress government has permitted? Seven thousand Hindus were given citizenship. I let me complete. Seven thousand Hindus were given citizenship by this government and Congress has not opposed. Why didn't Congress demand that seven thousand Muslims who have come from Bangladesh give their citizenship? Because these Muslims who are infil infiltrators, they can go and stay in Pakistan and Bangladesh, but Hindus have no, 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 no space in the world except the India. I am giving one example of Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, the Hindu population was 1, la 1 crore 50 lakhs in, 19 in 2001. It was expected to be 1 crore 80 lakhs, but it, it is 1 crore 20 lakhs. So 900,000 percent decline of Hindu population. These population uh, uh, population is called a missing population. Mr. So Sinha. now I am. Let me complete my, what I want to com communicate. That Hindus are being victimized in Pakistan. Other example is, the, is that in in Pakistan Hindus were 15 percent. Now they they are in 1998 1.60 percent. So of course the, in that context, govern, governor said that Hindus have to uh, a natural land for Hindus, but not for the, uh, the Mr. Muslims. Sinha, who are coming. The he has not of this. India. He, uh, no, Mr. Sinha, I'm sorry. Mm. The Constitution of India does not say that India is a country for only Hindus. for Hindus. No, he and he, the governor, was stepping, was overstepping no, RT, the boundaries RT, RT, of the constitution. RT, RT, I agree. When I, he said I this. agree. Constitution is secular. As it is secular because no, Hindus are in no, majority. No, the day no Hindu will be turned minority in this country, India will be lucky like Pakistan, Bangladesh, no, 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 and Arab. No, no, but you know the problem so with a comment like this is the problem with the comment like this is uh, Sambit that it automatically makes this distinction that. Uh, Hindustan is for Hindus, India is for Hindus, for, for Hindus this is a natural home and Pakistan is naturally the home for Muslims. I mean that is what, what it means whereas India as we all know it is, the, is, is home for everyone and why this connotation of Pakistan and Muslims and, and India with Hindus, that's the problem here. No, no let, let me, let me. See, see, Nidhi, in fact, the good part of the debate is all of us are mature people. There's no shouting, so we can understand the misrepresented fact of the governor. And as I said, articulation is extremely important. When you speak on such important academic issues, every word should be weighed. Number one, what I feel, though I cannot speak for the governor, what I feel, what the governor was trying to suggest during a press conference on national register on citizenship, that the question asked to him was what would happen to the Hindus who have come from Bangladesh? Bangladesh, would they be put under scrutiny or would they be allowed to live in India as refugees? To which he replied that, well, yes, it's a natural home to them. Where, would, where else would they go if Hindus were to be prosecuted? The example was 21. I mean, when Bangladesh was separated, it was 21 percentage Hindu population there. Today, it is less than 8 percentage, approximately 7 percentage. So there is a great deal of persecution of Hindus and minorities in Bangladesh. So where do these minorities go? He said that just as Rohingya and Muslims, Tibetans, or just as other Muslims can also come and settle in India, these Hindus have their natural home in India, so they need not go anywhere else. They can come and settle over here. We will grant them the refugee Mr. status. Okay. Mr. Patra, these are decisions that the political executive takes, not the constitutional authority. The governor is a no. constitutional authority. He could, if, if somebody asked him that question, he could have said, well, the government will take a decision on this. It's not for him to decide. He has to speak within the boundaries of the constitution. 
Now, if the political executive wants to take a certain decision, that's for the Prime Minister, no, I, the Home Ministry, the Assam government. These are the authorities no, Arthi, that take Arthi, that my, decision. My question is that if Governor or the President that, of that, India, that's why if Arthi, anyone, uh, Sambit, one, one second, if anyone addresses the yes, Muslims, yes. that doesn't mean that he's addressing the 17 crore Muslims in, in, in India is staying. He is addressing here the Bangladeshi Muslims who have entered in, in Assam and they are changing the demographic and cultural character of Assam. That is very that significant in Assam and previous governor. Previous governor, no previous governor. S K Sinha, Aarti, Aarti, let me complete. S K Sinha's report. You go through the S K Sinha's report on Assam. He made this almost similar thing, almost similar thing about the Assam. I mean, Aarti made the point that actually the Congress has been credited with politicizing the governor's post in the past. It's unfortunately a tradition that's continued into this time as well. Absolutely. And it's not just one governor. Everyone is a polit. Almost everybody is a political appointee. Aarti, that's the problem. That's right. And if a governor can say that I am a swayam seva, I'm a proud swayam. What's wrong? He's a no, representative. He represents the president no, so of India. He's, uh, he's not a Someone says that I belong to a certain cultural or Christian organization. There's nothing wrong. If he, he says I'm a proud BJP worker. When he becomes a governor, if, when he becomes a governor, he doesn't represent anybody. No, he doesn't except the president but of RSS India is and a, the constitution. He and he has to speak within those boundaries. I think you all are not. It is a matter of pride that a Seva is a governor. He can serve the country more than any other person. He has commitment to the nation. He has commitment. He has been groomed to serve the nation. And it's okay. It's okay for. Uh, I mean, it's okay to say that. It's okay to say I. Uh, I'm not secular. I'm a Hindu. Tathagat Roy for him to say that as a governor. That's all right. No, uh, a Hindu can't be communal. Hindu and secularism are both the synonym term. <laughs> there can't. There, there can be aberration and exception, but uh, Hindus are by and large history. It is a historical fact. I'm. It is not a matter to laugh. No, I'm it, saying. I am saying. Is it appropriate for a governor to say this as a constitutional head? No. If he says I'm a proud Hindu, what's wrong? It is not uh, calling uh, myself a proud Hindu it means not attacking Muslim and Christians. I. I can respect. I have equal respect, more requ respect but than RC and you. To no, a Muslim, no, no, calling but, myself but, a proud no, Hindu. It's, it's not a question of who has more respect, Mr. Sinha. You have admitted. Sambit Patra has admitted that the governor made a mistake. No, there that no it was expression deficit. Yeah, yeah, definitely, there is expression deficit. I agree that. You can call it expression that. deficit. He called it misarticulation. But the fact is that both of you clearly disapprove of what the governor. No, said. I think his, inter so, his intention so is me, not a theocratic. No, so his tell, intention no, is not so theocratic. So tell me, tell me. Shouldn't you all be more careful when you select governors? Why are you repeating the same mistakes that Sambit, the Congress has made over the years the, of yeah. putting in all Why kinds of people? Why make the same mistakes that the Congress made with political uh, appointees in Raj Bhavan? So look, uh, as far as the governors, uh, uh, this particular governor's behavior is concerned, is he a habitual offender? No, he's, he is not a habitual offender. He has never made a statement which was wrong in the past. And we have never discussed him at length. And thirdly, and very importantly, look, I, I mean, the intentions are very clear to you as well. Aarti, you also know that it was an academic discussion. And the, as rightly pointed out by <laughs> Sanaji, it was an expression deficit. He could have put it in better words. But he words. did it twice. He could have selected better he words did it to twice. an academic Sambit, view. He said the, something wrong the no, first time. But when he I, clarified, I, no, he no, made no, it no, worse. No, no. No, I, I, so, I you think know, Arthi, what do you say about Arthi, that? Context, Arthi, 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 we are holding on to sentences, okay, we are holding on to grammar, I, I say Muslims knowing are very well Muslims. that the intention Ironically, was something the, different. The, the political party that actually is demanding that he step down has run away from this debate. So the Congress isn't here and I don't know why. But, you know, uh, this, this is what it has come to. The Congress and the opposition, I think Mayavati has also joined in today saying that the Assam governor must go, but I think it's going to retreat into one of those controversies as we have seen with Tathagat Roy, uh, outrage for a few days and then it kind of disappears from the headlines. Thank you very much, Sambit Patra, Rakesh Sinha and Aarti Jarath for joining us on the program.